My name is Alexandria Infall, and today I want to talk to you about the National Dog of Mexico, also my best friend. Anubis, come here! Anubis, come! Yes, here! No, 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 here, here! Yes, yes, good girl! So, this is a Cholo Squinkly. The more American way to pronounce her name is Choluit Squinkly, and they're also known as the Zolo, the Sholo, or the Cholo. So, these dogs are very rare. There's only believed to be a thousand of them in the US and 30,000 in the entire world and they almost went extinct twice but people who are advocates for the breed and preserving the culture of Aztec history have really done a good job at keeping these guys alive and bringing them back from the dead. Funny enough, the name of this dog comes from the Aztec god of death which is um, um, Xolotl, and it's combined with the Aztec word for God, which is Izquitli. And um, it's very appropriate because they believe that the God of the dead would um, basically, they believe that the God of the dead gave them these dogs. So these dogs almost went extinct twice. It's so sad. Um, so the first time was when the Spanish came over and the Aztecs would ceremonially sacrifice these dogs. If you died, they would bury your dog with you. If you were a warrior, um, your spearhead would be buried in your dog's mouth with you. And then they would also sacrifice them ritualistically in the sense of, um, like if they wanted rain or if they wanted a specific type of weather, cats trying to get the bull, they would sacrifice these dogs to, to try to bring that upon them. But when the Spanish learned this, um, they didn't want the Aztecs to be able to keep these dogs because it was seen as a pagan tradition and they really wanted to like impose their way of life on the Aztecs. So they really wanted to wipe these dogs out. They also learned that they tasted really good apparently, and they ate a lot of them, especially at parties, it was seen as an exotic meat. Um, and there were some populations in the more mountainous areas that were able to survive because the Spanish didn't go up there as much. And some dog breeders tried um, going up there. They did an expedition, expedition I believe, in the in the mid 1800s where they were able to bring um, some breeding pairs back and bringing love for this breed in the dog show community and the dog community really helped them come back. But the problem was that it was more of a fad. It wasn't like, like a really, really good relationship that people had with the breed at the time. So they started to just kind of fade out because there weren't that many of them and the popularity wasn't really there for people to keep breeding them. Um, so they almost went extinct a second time. But historians in Mexico really learned about this dog and they really realized the cultural significant, significance of this dog. Like they literally believed the Aztec god of death gave them this dog. They literally believed this dog had spiritual healing properties. They literally believe that if, if you were not feeling well, you could lay with one of these dogs and it would make you feel better. And they, they learn about this and um, they really wanted to preserve this, this very special dog. It's, it's such a, a, a beautiful symbol of, of Aztec culture and you know Mayan culture. And um, luckily today, the numbers are increasing. Um, yeah, there's, there's uh, believed to be about 30,000 in the world now about a thousand in the US and most of them are in Mexico and um, another popular place outside of the US um, that imports them is uh, Russia believe it or not they have no hair but they're in Russia um, but yeah that's a little bit about the culture and the history of the Cholo Squinkly um, now I want to talk to you guys a little bit about temperament care all that so this is a very healthy breed because they are an ancient, naturally evolved breed. She's getting bored, so I'm gonna give her a treat so she doesn't leave. Um, because they are a very natural breed, they don't have a lot of like significant health problems. You know, a pug, for instance, might have problems 
breathing because they were bred to have no, like a very short nose. Um, these guys weren't bred for anything specific, so they kept all the natural healthy traits. The one thing though, you do have to take care of their skin. Anubis here is only seven months old, so she is still in her acne phase. Most of them, when they're adults, they kind of grow out of having so much acne um, and they get better, but she's in a phase where she has a lot of it. You have to put in the work with this type of dog. There are a lot of work. Um, you have to pop the blackheads because they can get really bad and you have to wash them regularly. If they roll around in the dirt, you have to go give them a bath and the dirt really sticks to their their skin. She looks like dark chocolate and then she'll roll around in the dirt and people think my dog is gray. Um, but what I do, and I'll actually demonstrate right here because she needs her moisturizer. What I do after she gets her bath is I like to use coconut oil. Um, sometimes I'll use some safe lotion and sometimes I'll mix coconut oil in with the lotion and I like that the best but it just takes a little bit more prep work so they love the coconut oil and it's totally okay with them usually I like doing this before we go out but right now I have a blanket down so she doesn't get the couch dirty um, so when you go out it's it's nice because you don't get oil all over the couch or all over your, your floors or anything. And you know, if you go to the dog park, it's so funny. I'll, I'll, you'll always see all the other dogs like lick it up. Um, but you do have to do this. They do get ashy. Um, they do need moisturizer. And if you have a lighter color Sholo, you do need to put sunscreen on them. I know there's like albino ones. They're very beautiful. They're, blue eyes and they're pink, just like my hairless cat. And um, you know, if my hairless cow's out in the sun, like I take her on my hikes, like I would definitely put sunscreen on him. If you're indoors a lot, or if you're in an area with a lot of sun, it's probably not as much of an issue, but that is something to be careful with. She's really dark, so she, she doesn't really need it. And while there is a type of cholo that um, has hair, the hairless variety is more traditional and more sought after, but the hairless variety is known to have some, some dental issues, um, or not necessarily issues, but um, some interesting dental things where they um, they don't have as many teeth as, as other dogs do. They do have the molars usually, um, but they don't have a lot of premolars. They may not have the premolars at all and um, sometimes they'll be missing some of the front teeth and um, they are more likely to fall out but it doesn't um, pose any significant health issues um, as long as you're taking good care of them um, and then just talking about temperament it's one thing i thought was really strange when you're doing your research on these guys you will see everywhere that they're calm and tranquil breed, that they're a good watchdog, that they're very loyal, all of these things. And I'm sure those things are true. All of them are true when they're an adult. But I didn't really find a lot of research on this before I got one, so I think this is important to bring up for other people considering to get one. They are extremely hyper as puppies, and I found an article talking about this later. But they're more hyper than a normal dog. And I was looking for a more calm dog um, just because of where I live and the space I have. I was like, you know, I want to make sure I can accommodate for a dog. Apparently, they're extremely, extremely hyper puppies. She's almost full grown now. So she's, she's, she's sitting with a human. She's, um, so she's, she's chilling out now. But when I first got her, she would run from one couch to the other, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and it was crazy. They do come in some other sizes. Um, so she, she's gonna get a little bit of stuff that I'm licking it all off. Um, try and get her other side. She won't get up. She's, there, she's very stubborn. Whenever I try to move her, she completely leans her body weight in the other direction. I don't know, she needs to be moved. <laughs> um, but yeah, so these dogs do come in some other sizes if you, if you want. 
Um, if you really like the dog, but you don't want such a big dog, she's, she's probably gonna get 50 pounds. She's 40 pounds right now. She's not even full grown. Um, usually like the most they get is about 50 pounds, but I think her parents were both 60 pounds. So they think, I think they're really big ones, um, which I like, but they come in a toy size and a miniature size. The toy size is probably about the size of a chihuahua and the intermediate size, also known as the miniature size, is in between the toy and this size. And another thing to take note of is that you might have an ear that has a hard time standing up. So you can just go ahead and wrap some tape around it as long as it's not too sticky for yourself. It's not cropping it. It doesn't hurt them. It just helps train the ear to stand up not necessarily related to the history of them or the care of them but one thing i do think that like you need to think about if you're getting one of them is they will give you a lot of attention unless you're living somewhere like mexico city where they're actually quite popular people are like what kind of dog is that i get all kinds of questions a lot of people think i've shaved her a lot of people ask if she has mange some people are grossed out by her some people are weirded out by her other people think she's so beautiful and like a lot of like people from Mexico who know about the culture and everything, they get very excited. But sometimes it does get a bit much and sometimes you just want to enjoy your day because if you get like a big group of people surrounding your dog, sometimes it's a lot. Like sometimes you literally feel like you're walking with a celebrity with one of these dogs and I'm not exaggerating. So that's something that I do think you have to be worried about. Sometimes it does get a little annoying because I'm, you know, just trying to like go about my day, but you know, I try to be nice always because you know, usually the people are like very, very nice and respectful and they're very excited. Some people are weirded out. Like I, I've literally had someone think she was a deer and I had someone else think she was a kangaroo. And like these, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know like what, what zoos these people have been to or what, but I did not think she looks like a kangaroo. Um, but yeah, overall, as long as you're really taking care of their skin and giving them a lot of exercise when they're young, I think you'll be a really good fit for them. I love taking her on hikes. I take her on a walk every day. Um, and they're very, very intelligent. They're an extremely intelligent dog. Um, any of the ancient breeds tend to be very smart. Um, so they learn very fast. I wanna work on more training with her but they do pick up the training very fast. They're very loyal, they're very obedient. They are also they are also a dominant breed, so you do have to be careful of that sometimes. Sometimes I do feel like she will kind of like challenge me with the leadership, so I have to like kind of like set my foot down and be like, no, I told you to do this, you're gonna do that. But I have always dreamed of one of the, <laughs> I've always dreamed of having one of these dogs and she is so amazing. She has not let me down. She's so beautiful and she's got so much personality. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you learned something interesting for this video. If you're thinking about getting a Cholo, I hope that this video provided you with some good information or some interesting information. Um, I am planning to do some more videos like this, where maybe I talk about one of my animals with you guys, or um, I'm planning on doing some more of my travel videos when I'm able to do that. And then also maybe just some videos talking to people out in public, maybe some funny stuff. Let me know what you guys thought of this. This is a new kind of content for me. Um, I'm really trying to get out there and post more videos. And obviously I can't make every video I do a traveling video, which is all my YouTube has been so far because I'm not filthy rich. I, I would love to, to travel that often to have a new YouTube video every week about traveling, but I can't. Anyhow, this has been Alexandria Info. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe, please like, please leave a comment. It helps content creators so much. This is our freaking livelihood. We appreciate it so much. You're all so amazing. Every little bit of support you give us makes our day so much better. I'm at loss for words now, so I'm going to tune out. Have a great day again. Goodbye. Anubis, say bye.